You've heard the hot takes and the cries of outrage. Now here are opinions on the weekend's US Open controversy from someone who actually watches tennis. Savage. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the tennis vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so as per usual. I wish I was sat here to talk about tennis. It's been a big weekend for tennis given that Naomi Osaka won her maiden Grand Slam title at the weekend and Novak Djokovic won his 14th. However, tennis has taken the mainstream headlines by storm for all the wrong reasons. Something happened during the Women's US Open final this year which I am 99% sure you will be aware of. It has been incredibly high profile. I've had several people asking me to comment on it and I think I need to address this separately to everything else from the US Open which I will be looking at in another video. For those who are not as familiar with what happened, I will give a brief overview of the complete and utter drama of Saturday evening. So Serena Williams, 23-time Grand Slam champion, was up against 20-year-old Naomi Osaka in the US Open final. Osaka came out playing fearless tennis, really absorbing Williams' power, won a 6-2 first set. Carlos Ramos, an experienced umpire, was in the chair for the match. Then at one all in the second set, with Serena down 40-15, Ramos gave Serena a coaching violation saying that Patrick Muratoglu had been trying to coach her which after the match Muratoglu admitted that he had done. That was Serena's first offence of the match and resulted in a warning but nothing more. Later in the set Osaka broke Serena for 3-2. Serena lost her cool and smashed her racket which resulted in a second warning and because it was Serena's second offence it resulted also in a point penalty. Serena went on to be broken again, trailed 4-3 and sat down at the changeover and began arguing yet again with Carlos Ramos. Towards the end of that argument she called him a liar and a thief and Ramos gave her a violation for verbal abuse. That was a third warning for Serena, her third offence which resulted in a game penalty. This meant that rather than trailing 4-3 Serena was trailing 5-3 in that significant second set and she went on to lose the match 6-2, 6-4 to Osaka. Emotions were riding high, she got the referee and a WTA supervisor onto court after that third warning. A lot of drama, a lot of controversy, I'm here to dissect it and give my my personal opinions on what happened. So I've given you the brief overview picture of what happened, I'm now going to go into it in more detail. In a way I don't know where to begin with this, there have been many criticisms of both Carlos Ramos and Serena Williams for what happened on Saturday night. People have criticised the way Ramos dealt with the situation, they've accused him of having an ego, people have criticised Serena for losing her cool and being disrespectful to Ramos and the fact that Serena has blown up at officials and umpires in the past at the US Open probably doesn't help her cause here. She even even referenced herself how this always keeps happening to her. So starting with why Serena was penalised, I am now reading this from the official Grand Slam rulebook and this is under the heading point penalty schedule. If you want to see for yourself it's on page 46, I'm going to put it on the screen now. This clearly explains the consequences for offences during a match. The first offence results in a warning, the second offence results in a point penalty, third and each subsequent offence results in a game penalty. So let's have a look at the three warnings which Serena received. The first one for coaching and this is is the most controversial one and also the base of the pyramid. So at 1 all 40 15, Patrick Muratoglu motioned to Serena Williams and it's on replays. He kind of motioned back and forward to her as if to say to move forward in the courts. Serena says she did not see this. I don't think she saw it because when she went across to talk to the umpire, she mentioned Muratoglu sticking his thumbs up, which he didn't. Also, when she was given the point penalty and the game penalty later in the match, even though it was announced over the microphone, it actually took Serena going onto the court, getting ready to play and hearing it announced again before she realised what was happening, which shows she was very focused on the match. This is the part where I really feel for Serena because she did not ask to be coached by Muratoglu, who subsequently admitted that he had been trying to coach her and then tried to defend it, which was not the wisest thing to do in the whole story situation. Serena did not ask Muratoglu to coach her, but he did it anyway. Ramos saw that and therefore he gave Serena a coaching violation. The thing here for me is that I think Ramos should probably have given Serena a soft warning before actually stepping down and giving her a solid coaching violation. Firstly because Ramos didn't actually know Serena had seen Muratoglu. Secondly because he even said to her he knew her character and he seemed to be agreeing with her that it wasn't in her nature to cheat and to use coaching. Even when the WTA use coaching throughout the year and are allowed to have coaching visits at changeovers, Serena and Venus by principle never use that. This is what everything else was built on. If Serena hadn't got this coaching warning she wouldn't have had a point penalty for smashing her racket, she wouldn't have had a game penalty for the verbal abuse later on. Serena kept using the word unfair, unfair, unfair 
and it must have felt incredibly unfair to her because she apparently wasn't aware that Muratoglu was trying to coach her and she hadn't asked for that coaching in the first place. But I wouldn't use the word unfair, I would use the word harsh because it's in the rule book that if someone is caught getting coaching given to them on the court, they are able to have a coaching violation. Unfortunately, the issue here is inconsistency across all of umpiring because there would be some umpires like Carlos Ramos who see it and immediately stamp down on it. There are other umpires who would call Serena over and say, I've seen your coach doing this, I'm giving you a soft warning now and saying that if it happens again, I'm going to have to act upon it. But whether or not he was being strict, which I think he was, Ramos was going by the book and he had a right to give Serena the coaching violation. We will skip over the racket abuse because that clear as day deserved to have a warning. Can't argue with a cracked racket on the court. And then we go on to the verbal abuse, which is the other really controversial one. And this is where a lot of people, probably a lot of them not tennis watchers who don't understand the rules of tennis, were up in arms, using Serena's words that men have said worse to umpires and got away with it, saying that a black woman asking someone to apologise should not be treated in that way. I know I haven't gone into detail on what Serena said yet and the way she approached Ramos, but I want to point out that Ramos did not penalise her for that first approach to the chair after she was penalised for coaching at one all. She did not get penalised for the words she said to him after she got a warning and a point penalty for racket abuse. He did not even penalise her when she told him to stop talking to her, when she told him that he would never ever be on a course of hers again. He did not even penalise her for telling him that he was a liar. Serena did a lot of talking to Ramos during which Ramos let her vent and did not penalise her. The one time when Ramos stepped down and gave her that warning for verbal abuse was when Serena called him a thief. Do I think he had a right to do that? Absolutely. Do I think he did it by the book? Yes I do, because this is what the book says. We can see here under the heading verbal abuse, players shall not at any time directly or indirectly verbally abuse any official, opponent, etc, etc, and then down at the bottom, for the purposes of this rule, verbal abuse is defined as a statement about an official, opponent, sponsor, spectator, or other person that implies dishonesty, or is derogatory, insulting, or otherwise abusive. Notice the word dishonesty there. I think that calling somebody a thief and calling somebody a liar implies that they are dishonest and therefore Ramos was well within his rights to award Serena that penalty. Things then swing back to the first violation and whether she should have been given one for coaching and I repeat this is a grey area and I repeat the problem here is with inconsistency among umpires because some of them step straight down and some of them give soft warnings. So to sum up that section of my opinion I think Ramos was within his rights to do what he did, I think he tried to do his job and tried to do it by the book and actually the ICF have since come out in support of Ramos and basically said the same thing. Now to look at the way Serena handled herself in the situation, I'm not excusing her behaviour, I'm not saying that the way she acted wasn't wrong because I don't think it was right, but I think the clips I saw online were really clips that were taken at the height of her emotional distress and I don't think that fairly represented how Serena actually carried herself throughout the occasion. When she got the warning at one all, I think Serena was actually quite dignified. She went up to the umpire's chair, she was clearly angry, but she didn't shout and the words that I caught from her were, if he gives me a thumbs up, he's telling me to come on. We don't have any code and I know you don't know that and I understand why you may have thought that was coaching, but I tell you it's not. I don't cheat to win. I'd rather the lose, I'm just letting you know. If Serena had left things at that, if she hadn't brought it up again, if she hadn't continued to argue, that would have been fine. But then obviously when she smashed her racket I and mean, it resulted in a point penalty, she was again at the umpire telling him to apologise and saying that it wasn't fair because she shouldn't have had the coaching penalty in the first place. I think when she got broken again and was 4-3 down, that was when it really started going wrong for Serena. She started off with, I never cheat, I explained that to you, for you to attack my character is something that's wrong, it's wrong. And then she went on, you're attacking my character, a direct accusation, yes you are, you owe me an apology, you will never ever ever be on another course of mine as long as you live, you are the liar. Then there was silence and she carried on with, when are you going to give me my apology, you owe me an apology, say it, say you're sorry. She kept asking for an apology and when Ramos refused to give her one, Serena said, well then don't talk to me. And Ramos obliged, he nodded, he said okay and he turned away. So even if things had stopped there, it would have been fine, but after telling him not to talk to her, Serena then carried on talking to him. So she's 
digging herself her own hole here. A few moments later she continues with how dare you insinuate that I was cheating and it's even after Ramos has called time on the changeover that Serena comes out with you stole a point from me you're a thief too. Given that happened I think Ramos was 100% within his rights to give her that violation. Serena shouted of course and was angry but I think she was more tearful than anything when she went to get the referee and the WTA supervisor that came on she was in tears saying how it wasn't fair she wasn't screaming she was crying. I don't agree with the manner in which Serena spoke to Ramos when she ordered him not to speak to her when she informed him he would never be on a court of hers again or obviously when she called him a liar and a thief however emotional and upset she was that wasn't warranted. As far as egos go I think Carlos Ramos had less of an ego trying to do his job than Serena Williams did telling him he would never ever be on another court of hers again and telling him not to talk to her. But one of the real things I took issue with of what she said came later in the argument when the referee and the WTA supervisor were on court and I think this was Serena getting desperate and she said there are so many men that have said worse things than I said that haven't been punished for it and I think she even used the sentence because I'm a woman you're punishing me. The issue here was not that Serena Williams is female the issue here is that there is an inconsistency among umpires with enforcing rules. Andy Murray is neither black nor female and he was in a high profile collision with Carlos Ramos when Ramos penalised him for his criticism of Ramos, I quote, stupid umpiring. Ramos has made controversial calls to male players before and the reason they haven't been so high profile is because they often haven't been the third offence for the men and therefore haven't resulted in a game penalty. Men are given violations for their conduct on court all the time and those that were trying to say otherwise in the aftermath of Saturday's drama were generally feminists who had just rocked up to support Serena who don't usually watch tennis and clearly don't know the rules of the game. If Serena's verbal abuse had been her first offence offence she wouldn't have faced a point penalty or a game penalty for it it's the fact that it was her third so I think the argument that it was being done because she was a woman is totally invalid and even if that wasn't the case just because someone does something and gets away with it it doesn't make it right so in short I think that everything Carlos Ramos did on Saturday night was by the book and even though it was harsh on Serena Williams I don't think it was unfair Serena was in control of her actions and her words even if she wasn't in control of the coaching and she could have prevented that point penalty and that game penalty penalty herself. Over the past few years because of her accomplishments in tennis, because of the stances she takes and because of things that happen outside of the game, Serena Williams has become very celebrity and it's almost become the in thing to worship her. So after the events of Saturday there were a lot of people who don't know anything clearly about the rules of tennis or tennis itself coming out in support of her and I think the WTA and the USTA need to be careful of trying too hard to please her as seen by some pretty poor statements that came out from the them after the events of the final. Serena Williams is incredible and inspirational and we are incredibly fortunate to witness what she does on the tennis court but she is also human and flawed and that needs to be realised. I really hate talking about drama over great tennis that has been played but I feel like I needed to get this out of the way before we properly assess the tennis that went on in New York. Thank you for watching and let me know whether you agree with me and your thoughts on the whole sorry incident. Please subscribe if you haven't and you didn't find this video totally boring. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Glad to get that out of the way. <laughs>